Hey guys, my name is Ryan. And my name is Miska. And welcome to Overwatch Central. Now there are plenty of videos going over tips and tricks on how to play Overwatch. We've done them ourselves and for launch day we'd rather go over something with more instant results. We quickly devised a list of not so obvious settings, abilities and information that a new player may not know at first glance. These are little things that can go a long way when learning to play the game. So here are our top 5 tools that you need to use in Overwatch. Our first tool is more of a feature really, it's actually just the melee button. This is bound to V on a keyboard and on controllers it's bound to pressing down the right analog stick for the PS4 and Xbox One. The melee attack currently deals 30 damage and is on a fairly short cooldown. So if you end up very close to an enemy you definitely want to be using it, especially if they're on low health as well. Melee attacks are even more important for the likes of Tracer and Genji as they'll be sipping around their targets so every time you get close give them the old Boop. Roadhog is another hero that does wonders with the melee hit. The combo of his hook, primary fire and melee attack will make quick work of most heroes. The reason as to why quick melee is on this list is because a lot of players don't actually use it enough, so make sure you are. The second tool you will want to be using a lot is the ping wheel. Ping wheel is a fantastic piece of utility that is easily accessible in Overwatch on all platforms. It allows you to coordinate with the rest of your team using the various options, including two very important alerts. Group up and also your ultimate status. These are also available on hotkeys on your keyboard if you're a PC player, so you can rebind them in the options menu if you wish. Showing your team your ultimate status in chat a bit now and again is strongly recommended by us. Constantly checking the scoreboard for ultimate status can be a bit annoying and get in the way of stuff. Not to mention it's something that a lot of players do anyway. So make sure that your team are aware of the situation by using the ping wheel to its full extent, along with other means of communication. We get asked a lot about our own mouse sensitivity, so we figured talking about the mouse sensitivities was a good plan here. You can see our mouse settings on screen now. Ryan's sensitivity is fairly low and mine is a little bit higher. Low mouse sensitivities are great for hit scanners like McCree and snipers, but you can run into issues when jumping around as something quick like a tracer for example. Obviously you have to adjust your DPI and your mouse sensitivity and there are some good websites for this. Check the links in the description for some info and resources to tweak yours. On top of all this you can also change the specific sensitivities of Winnemaker scope in the hero specific settings, meaning that you can make the experience of sniping a lot more comfortable for you. Jump into the practice range and just tweak with the settings and see what works. Adjusting and customizing the game to your liking and hopefully result in you playing a lot better. You also have options to customize your crosshair of your weapon. Some of you have spotted that we changed our crosshairs to a little green dot. The dot means that you know where you're aiming but your crosshair isn't impairing your view in any way. Green is the most practical color as nothing in the game is that green. That's one of the reasons why green screens are green and not another color, because green is the highest luminance of all the color channels. But that's going on to something else. But be aware that if you change the crosshair on some of these heroes you will actually lose a little bit of other features, such as the Hanzo crosshair is very useful for knowing how the arrow will sort of drop off and hit the enemy. Same with the Sari one, the circle will fill up the more charge you have which is a very nice indication to know how much damage your weapon deals. Next up is using your ears, which are kind of a tool, but there are plenty of settings in Overwatch that can be used to make this more effective. This is one of the key bits of information we wanted to go over when learning to play the game. The in-game audio. Overwatch is some amazing audio design which makes it incredibly useful in the battlefield. The surround sound of the game gives you a good indication to where stuff is happening. Hell, if you listen closely enough you can hear the differences between each hero's footsteps. Apart from Zenyatta of course as he kind of floats. Listening closely to the audio can give you a good indication to where ultimates are also being used. Enemy ultimates tend to be in their native tongue and a hell of a lot louder and obvious than a teammate's ultimate. It should also give you a good indication of where this ultimate is coming from because of how obnoxious these shouts are. Most ultimates you'll just want to run for cover, but we just wanted to use this opportunity to say if you hear an enemy Junkrat's ultimate, spread out. Being spread out means that you will only be able to get at least one kill. If you don't spread out you're going to get yourself and your teammates killed around you. It might also be worth completely muting the game audio with the dials in the options menu. The music in Overwatch is fantastic, but sometimes you'll want to be able to hear all the sound effects going on around you, and the music may act as a distraction. 
Lastly, our final tool or feature is the kill feed. Make sure you have the kill feed on and make good use of it. Just like the ping wheel, it helps with making everyone aware of what's going on without having to shout too much over the voice chat. You also won't have to bring up the scoreboard all the time to check who's dead on both teams if you can keep an eye on the kill feed occasionally. If you see a bunch of red colored bars pop up in the top right of your screen, then try and react to that so you know that you're either at an advantage or disadvantage in the middle of a push or a last chance defense. Like I mentioned earlier, enable the kill feed because it wasn't enabled by default in beta for some reason. At the time of this recording we don't actually have access to the game since this is recorded a little bit ahead and don't know if it's enabled for everyone right now from the start in the full game or not. Either way, head into gameplay options and make sure the kill feed is activated. In a game like Overwatch where everything is very quick, you want to be as aware as possible and the kill feed definitely helps you with exactly that. And that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any obvious tips and tricks that a new player may not know at first glance, then do please put them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more Overwatch content if you haven't already, and until next time, take care, we'll see you then.